I followed the man to the team room to see only Mr. Wolf and the Count here. You did great! Thanks! I... Uh, where's Mr. Bandages? He said something about going to bed when we got back to the mansion. I was out there feeling my butt off to get a good score, and he's sleeping. Yes, I'm sure he was really tired. Actually, it's probably because he doesn't like the cold. I should go put his hand in a bowl of cold water. That would show him. Does that really work? We can always find out. I don't think that's really necessary. We should give the guy a break. He was wearing bandages and torn clothes. He's probably worried he'll get sick again. I guess you're right. It was pretty cold out here. Speaking of which, you can have your cape back, Count. I took off the cape and handed it back to the Count. You could have kept it until you were feeling warmer. Nah. It's fine. The mansion is much warmer than the outside anyway. Besides, I think I'll take a page out of Mr. Bandage's book and get some sleep too. The weather is perfect for it. I woke up much later, feeling completely energized. A glance at the clock, however, told me it was already night time. Hmm, what should I do now? I'm not in the mood to go back to sleep. Maybe I'll go look at the snow again. It will probably melt by tomorrow. I thought about putting my archer costume back on, but decided against it. My honesty was much warmer. I just put on my mask instead. After my late night running with Eric, I decided it was better safe than sorry. It didn't take me long to get outside. This place really is beautiful, covered in snow. I began walking aimlessly. Before I even realized where I was going, it seemed that my fear had led me to that first Kibi statue. What am I even doing here? My eyes were drowned with the inscription the Count had uncovered earlier. If others could not see what's inside, they would have to change that on the outside. It's a sad tale, isn't it? I turned to see the Count standing nearby. When did he get here? Do you think it was worth it? Mm? that they changed the way they appeared for other people. I think they would be the only ones that could answer that. I hope they find someone who will look beneath and see their differences. Someone who maybe even likes them for who they are. I think they may already have. For a while, the two of us just stood here, staring at the man holy statue and listening to the winds whisper by. It was during that moment of silence that I noticed several glowing pinpricks of light in the darkness. Those few seemed to multiply around us, dancing softly in the breeze. Fireflies? How pretty! I've never seen anything like it. I reached out for one and gently cut my hands around it. When I opened them, the little light flew out like a gentle flame. It's strange. I've never seen them in my... Uh, these gardens. Do you think Eric... No, there's no one out here to show them off to. Us even being here at all is a mere coincidence. I watched as the firefly circled the camp before landing on his shoulder. He froze on a spot, looking at it with a stiff expression as if unsure what to do. A giggle escaped my lips. You're going to have to breathe sometime soon, you know? A little movement won't hurt it. He let a slow breath, visibly relaxing. Easy for you to say you're as tiny and delicate as they are. You don't have to worry about their fragility as much. I live in an eyebrow at his word. Delicate. His eyes were still glued to the firefly. His eyes followed it sadly when it flew into the air to join the others. This beauty for us is just a fleeting moment, yet for them it is at the climax of their lives, and soon they will all be gone, leaving nothing but dust. Even if this is just a moment, it's something I will remember for the rest of my life. The cow looked at me then, and for a second I could have sworn I saw his cheeks flame red under the soft glow of the flickering light. It was gone as soon as it came. My ass must be playing tricks on me. I only just barely managed to hear him whisper softly. I will remember it too.